You're listening to Inspire Change, a broadcast that strives to educate, motivate, and empower men to challenge traditions of masculinity. To guide us through the intricacies and intersections of emotions, relationships, and male identity is renowned psychologist, author, and speaker, Gunter Swoboda. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Inspire Change. Now, this is part two of When Love Really Goes Wrong. And in the last episode, When Love Really Goes Wrong, part one, I spoke about the narcissistic personality disorder and what happens when we find ourselves in a relationship with someone with that problem. Now, in this particular episode, I want to focus on the other uh, prevalent, well, not so prevalent in some ways, personality issue, which is that of the borderline personality. And really, it's um, it's in some ways similar to the narcissistic personality disorder, but on another level, it's actually very, very different. And in understanding this, I think we can learn to not react in an overly judgmental and negatively reactive way. Because we do have some positive issues here. One is that if the person takes accountability for their behavior, the capacity for them to actually engage in therapy and change are really quite good. The challenge is for the person to have that insight that, hey, it's not just my partner. I've got a role to play here. And in fact, I'm often the person who instigates this. So what is it that we're talking about when we talk about the borderline personality? So let me talk a little bit about the the causes of personality disorders, and particularly with NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, and BPD, borderline personality disorder. One of the key issues that I as a therapist and also the research keeps pointing out is that there's some sort of attachment issue where the person is actually secure, you know, insecurely attached rather than securely attached in their parental relationships. But more importantly, often with the person with a borderline personality disorder is that they have experienced one or more childhood traumas. And so this, this is important in understanding how a person like that can be helped. Again, if we understand the dynamics as a therapist, as a helper, as a clinician, then we can really assist that person. I want to get the message out that if you somehow identify with this or these two particular disorders, you know, I want to reassure you that this isn't coming from a judgmental place, but rather from a place that, you know, you can change. And if you the partner of someone with this problem, it can also give you up to a certain point uh, a level of optimism that the person can actually really work through the relevant underlying issues that trigger them off the way that they do. So let me give you a bit of an overview about how this condition can actually really interfere with your life or the life of your partner. Okay, so if you're the person whose lived experience is that of the borderline personality disorder, one of the things that you're more than likely have experienced is that some of the main areas in your life have been either moderately or significantly affected, negatively affected. They usually fall into the categories of intimate relationship, jobs, school, social activities, self-image. And so... You know, we are. You know, we often see people going through repeated job changes or losses. Uh, they don't necessarily complete an education, although in a lot of instances, the person is actually, you know, very intelligent and and could be quite academically successful if they were able to regulate both their emotions and their whole sort of approach to life better. Uh, in some cases, you know, I see people who've got, you know, a series of legal issues going on and, and, you know, in some extreme cases, even jail. 
intimate relationships, as I said before, uh, generally are marred by, by high level of stress and, you know, um, separation and divorce is a common picture for the person. Um, in, you know, in a lot of instances, the person with a borderline personality will also look at self-injuring, such as cutting, burning, you know, frequent hospitalizations. And, you know, ironically, you know, the person who is so afraid of a rejection and abandonment, which is one of the core issues in dealing with borderline with a borderline personality, is that I am constantly afraid that no one's going to accept me, that everybody's going to reject me, and eventually I'm going to be completely and utterly abandoned. They frequently get into relationships that are actually abusive. Um, and so there's a pattern that evolves. So in this context, the person frequently experiences things like anxiety, depression, alcohol and drug or substance misuse or abuse are frequent um, due to making you know, difficult or poor choices. The person often experiences also post-traumatic stress and, and post-traumatic stress disorder. So there's a number of factors that are particularly relevant in this area. So what do we then see when the person with this particular challenge is in a relationship? Well, in the literature, there's an interesting cycle that's been uh, talked about. And certainly as a therapist, I, I see this very, very uh, often. And what it comes down to is essentially six stages um, for the person in their relationship. So stage one, you know, the person begins a new relationship and while the relationship appears to be relatively positive, uh, it's also seen as moving very, very, very quickly. So quite often I will, I'll get clients saying to me, you know, it was like, we, we had known each other all our lives. Now, that might sound very romantic, but in, in, in my instance, I usually flag that. It's a bit of a red flag. Um, and there's often frequently a very quick decision to or desire to build a future together. Uh, the person with the borderline personality disorder will then idolise the relationship simply based on a few encounters, a few dates. Um, and they become quite fixated at this point on their partner or their perceived partner. In stage two, um, the, the BPD partner becomes increasingly sensitive to everything that their partner says or does. And this goes through quite a negative filter. We're not talking about, you know, seeing things in a very positive light. So at this stage is when we begin to see the beginnings uh, of that manifestation of fear of abandonment and also not feeling worthwhile at all. Okay, so as we move towards stage three the partner with BPD sets up situations in the relationship that pushes their partner to demonstrate their love for them. Their goal is simply to feel worthwhile and to put a stop on this anxiety by manipulating the other person to show affection. As we head into stage four, there's a level of inconsistency and instability that begins to cause real friction and discord in the relationship. There may also be a whole bunch of other issues causing that anxiety to come back more intensely. The partner without BPD may appear calm and happy, but by this stage, their needs are probably not being met in the relationship. 
And this creates an even bigger problem. So the relationship now heads into the next stage, stage five. Now at this stage, the non-BPD partner has either thought about or has decided to put in plans to leave the relationship. The BPD partner, on the other hand, may try to explain and make excuses for what's going on in the relationship, um, but the non-BPD partner is essentially generally checking out. Now, there is a permutation on this because in, in, a, in a number of cases that I've worked with, I've seen this particular cycle flip over again and again and again. So stage five might become a bit of a cycle in of itself. So, you, you know, as the non-BPD partner is making decisions to leave the relationship, the BPD partner will start to try and negotiate, um, you know, why their partner should stay, that, you know, it's, they're either being misunderstood or they will try to do better. There is a, there's a real play at work in negotiating the non-BPD partner to stay. Now, if worse comes to worse, one of the things that can happen at this stage is that the partner threatens self-harm and or suicide. And so some non-BPD partners get really, really scared and at this stage go, okay, well, let's see what we can do. And this is often where I see people coming into either couples therapy or the non-BPD partner goes into therapy themselves frequently trying to figure out what is it that they are doing that's really triggering their partner off. And there usually is some stuff, but ultimately, unless the, the, their partner with uh, BPD goes into therapy themselves, this, is, this becomes a fruitless exercise. Okay, so let's move then into stage six. What's happening there? Uh, at this stage, the BPD partner, you know, usually feels depressed, angry, enraged, and generally speaking, will start to really sort of exhibit those mood swings. The, the inner world is now consumed by internal dialogue that's all about how bad and worthless they are. And their emotional volatility just gets stronger and stronger. And so, you know, like in stage five, it is at this stage, at stage six, that the person with BPD can really destabilize in, and begin to do risky, life threatening things and again become potentially suicidal. So, the question then is how does a partner cope with this? Well, there's basically Four suggestions that I have to most people. Firstly, you've got to set boundaries. You've got to be able to communicate and explain your perspective on what's happening in the relationship. Um, you've also got to be able to follow your own boundaries. And if you allow those boundaries to be too fluid you're actually not helping the situation. You're not helping the relationship. Um, you're teaching the other person that's, that it's okay to, you know, cross those boundaries that you'd initially established. Um, so from a values point of view, and you've heard me in previous uh, podcasts talk about being loving, being respectful and being cooperative, they're a good foundation to begin to establish the right boundaries with. You know, some of the behaviour that emerges during the different stages in the relationship are not okay. And you need to be very clear as a partner in that process to draw the line in the sand and, says, and, and, and really establish and be firm with, when you do this, this is not okay for me. And part of the process is to also negotiate that, you know, if you choose to get help, then we can actually have a relationship. Because as I said at the beginning, you know, 
any person with BPD, if they engage in therapy and really stick with it, they have a good outcome. They can have the very thing that they deeply, deeply desire, which is to have love, to be accepted, uh, and not to be abandoned. So it's a really important thing. But again, one of the things that it requires on behalf of the person with a personality disorder is to have and at least open themselves up to go, okay, I'm a major contributing uh, element in this relationship when it begins to go wrong. I need to do something. I need to take ownership for my part in the problems in this relationship. So boundaries, based on some solid values, being assertive and not getting conned. The manipulative behavior is going to be there because usually the person's learned that they can make them work. So, on that note, I'm going to leave it and I'm going to get you to really reflect on this because it may not be an intimate partner, it could be a friend or a relative who has this particular condition which is making life really, really difficult. Difficult. It's like being on an emotional roller coaster. You know, one minute the relationship's good, the next minute it's off, it's bad. And it can be extraordinarily stressful. So I hope this helps. And certainly, if there are any questions or anything, please just get in touch with me. Until next time, this is me signing off. Thank you for listening to Inspire Change, a broadcast that strives to educate, motivate, and empower men to challenge traditions of masculinity. For more information on the Making Good Men Great movement, or for individual and group coaching sessions with Gunter, visit goodmengreat.com. For inquiries regarding broadcast topics or appearing on the show, email Miranda at noartainment.com. That's Miranda at N-O-I-R-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T.com.